All right. Hi, I'm Debbie Nicholson, the Director of Community Outreach, and I'm coming to you with wonderful education today. So please like our uh, channel and subscribe. And if you like our content, please leave a comment and get involved in the conversation. And it also holidays are coming now. If you would like to donate, please go to our site, www.beakanswer.org. And we really appreciate um, any help you can give as 86 cents of every dollar goes to cancer prevention, education, and counseling. So we have a real treat today. Our coach, Beverly Diamond, is here, and I'm very excited for you to get to meet her. She's in uh, Canada, and she has a, a counseling and social work background. And from there, with her own experience of physical and emotional pain, she had great results with emotional release. And uh, she decided to go get certified to help others in body coding, emotion coding, and heart wall removal. And uh, I experienced it and I absolutely loved it. And we're gonna talk about that more. So hi, Bev, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Debbie, it's so good really, to be here. Yes, I'm really excited for everybody to get to meet you and learn more about your services. So you had your own positive experience with emotional release. So I wanted people uh, who have cancer to understand that this is an important component in the healing journey, that it can really bring positive results. Yeah, well, what I found um, about three years ago, I was working down in Mexico at a natural clinic. Um, people were coming from all over the world to get help with their uh, diagnosis of cancer. Some of them have al already been through chemo, radiation, some are just coming, just doing all natural when they got there. But um, I was doing the body code um, with people, and what I found was that every patient that got cancer, was diagnosed with cancer, they were going through some kind of trauma and uh, serious emotional um, troubles just before their diagnosis. Yes, that's a very common theme. Yeah, and so they weren't dealing, that was the missing piece that they weren't dealing with that. They were doing, you know, their exercise supplements, they were doing whether it's chemo radiation or whether it's other natural uh, type of uh, remedies, okay? But uh, they weren't doing the emotional. And uh, so, once they started doing that, or at least what I noticed, okay, was that they started becoming happier. Um, not so um, uh, thinking that their life is over, what am I going to do, you know? Um, also, I had two clients that had cancer. This And uh, one of them, he went to, uh, to get his diagnosis, and the doctor said to him, um, you have a couple months, uh, go home and get your affairs in order. And so anyways, he was one of my clients. So I started working on him right away and started releasing some of the negative energy that he had gotten from the doctor when he told him the diagnosis and, you know, like, uh, anger and fear and, uh, regret and sadness and grief and um, today that was like about four years ago and today he's still running around you know the world okay <laughs> um, and doing business and I, I mean he still may have you know some cancer in his body but he's still carrying on with life and having a fairly good quality life and when you see that, that's so encouraging. And I'm thinking, oh my God, he could have taken that uh, diagnosis and ran with it and it could have stayed in his body, that negative energy, and he could have been dead four years ago right. after the two months, which we've seen so many, so many times before, right? Right. So, so can um, emotions be 
um, from the diagnosis or they can be all the way back to childhood, correct? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like the um, trapped emotions, they can even be from inherited emotions uh, from your, uh, you know, ancestors right. and your grandmothers and to, uh, you know, far back. Um, I know with myself, uh, when I was uh, getting into it, I had always lived with the trapped emotion, I didn't know what it was at the time, but trapped emotion of guilt. Mm -hmm. um, and I always felt guilty for so many things and things that most people wouldn't feel guilty about or would, wouldn't even bat an eye to. And um, what happened when I found the body code and started releasing all these guilt uh, emotions and found out where they were coming from and they were coming from uh, inherited emotions from my ancestors, which on the, I am native, okay, part native. So, and the natives, they didn't even have the word guilt in their vocabulary. But because of things that had happened over the years, that became a big thing for them. And so they were feeling guilty of who they were and what they stood for. And, and I, I had that in me, and not understand it's passed why. Passed on through generations too. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. and it was a horrible way to live, because other people say, "Why would you feel guilty about that?" Even when I wasn't guilty, I still felt guilty. You know. Um, so, anyways, it was uh, good to have that released. And then they can show up in different parts of the body. Yeah. And then there's definitely one, like, like there's trapped emotions are like. Uh, yeah, negative spheres in the body. And so they can, you know, become lodged, you know, in um, an organ or a gland, any part of your, your body to cause pain, to cause, uh, you know, discomfort or um, imbalances where, say, your kidneys aren't working properly or, you know, stomach. So. It's so interesting. I think it's so important for people to understand that, there's, there's all different root causes and, and all different things need to be in balance. So yeah. this, this is one of the big things um, that really needs to be in balance and to be looked at. But how do you know if you have trapped emotions? Is there any way to know? Well, I think people deep down, if you ask them, do you have trapped emotions? They're gonna say yes. Okay. And not even understand. They're just going to know there's stuff in there that they don't know how to get out. Okay. And it could be like grief. It could be unforgiveness. It could be anger. You know, and uh, I mean, you see all this road rage going on, you know, right. it's trapped emotions of anger that are in, in people. Not everybody gets out of their car and wants to go punch the, the guy in front of them. out. Okay. But it's, it could be the guy that has all these anger uh, trapped emotions that it's like, yep, that's it. Right. You know? yes. So they affect all of our relationships. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's and it can it's, affect, like even having unhealthy courting with people, unhealthy connections with people. Sometimes like you leave one relationship and you haven't cut the cords of that relationship and you're trying to get into a, a new one. Right. Okay. And you're going, why am I still thinking about that last relationship? Why am I still stuck there? Well, it's because of cords. There's energy cords that are, you have connections that aren't cut. So this is a really neat work, okay? And I've seen uh, working, like I, I work with people on relationships and, you know, people um, sometimes wanting to find a new relationship, but yet they've got all these old relationships they haven't cut the cords with so let's not move on so um there's a lot of different things uh, that people come to me for you know like uh, you know if they're dealing with cancer depression anxiety stress in the workplace uh, uh physical issues, back pain you know um uh any kind of uh mental issues you know and, uh, well, and, uh, I mean, um, I did two sessions with you yes. and I absolutely loved it. And, and I thought it was really neat because 
I have, was having hip pain that felt like a toothache almost, and it was really keeping me up at night. It was, it was really starting to affect me. And you asked me if I had it. I didn't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, after, I mean, it, it was a lot, and, and it kind of felt like emotional surgery, you were saying, and you're yeah. tired after. You know, the more you release, the more yeah. tired you are, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like uh, a weight's been lifted off too. So it's almost like you're tired, but in a peaceful kind of way. Um, I just wanted to cuddle up and go to sleep. But I, I realized in the next couple of weeks, like I wasn't really thinking about it. And all of a sudden I said, that's weird. My hip hasn't been bothering me. It was yeah. it's just gone. Yeah. So I thought that was um, really amazing. Uh, and a lot of the things that came up, um, and you kind of pinpointed the age too. So it gives you a lot of awareness for maybe what could have happened, um, what you're carrying, what's bothering you. Uh, it, it brought a lot of awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it kind of makes you feel like you're involved then because you were asking me questions too. So yeah. uh, you're also involved. Um, which I think is nice. Yeah. Well, I think what I like to make sure is that I am just the facilitator. Mm -hmm. This is your session. Mm -hmm. I want to do the best I can for you. And I want you to have the power. Be empowered and go, okay, Beth, this is what the, this is what's coming up or or, you know, can we look at this, uh, you know, and just, if you want to talk about anything, then you can. If you don't, let's just release it. Mm -hmm. So this way, um, what I like about releasing things without having to relive them again. Right. Like years that I've had, uh, you know, struggled with depression on and off. And, you know, I did everything I could. And did a lot of counseling uh, with a lot of different people. And I was always telling my story. Right. But I'd come out of there, and a lot of times I'd be feeling the same way. Right. And I go, but I, I don't feel any different. I just right. felt like I just- You're just replaying your story. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and things still bothered me, and I was still affected. And once I had, you know, the release, okay, that energy work I was telling you about, I knew I was different. I just knew it. I come out of there and I felt different. It That's didn't matter true. what I was going to face in life. I was going to look at, deal with it in a different way because I didn't feel so distraught and hopeless anymore. Right. Yeah, you just feel lighter, like, like you've let some things that are weighing you down go. Absolutely. I maybe... Uh, let me know why you decided to take the course with Be Cancer. Were you finding that you were uh, coming in contact more and more with people with cancer? Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's like everybody that, you know, you turn around, somebody's got cancer, you know, in their family, including their dog, you know? Right. Like it was just like, it's just like an epidemic right now. I mean, everybody knows somebody who's got cancer. Absolutely. Whether it's, you know, your girlfriend, your husband, your father, your mother, you know, uh, there's somebody. And um, I just wanted to do this so I would have more knowledge, okay, because I think, and more understanding. So when I'm doing the body code, you know, if, if I can be more equipped, okay, uh, about cancer, then I am more be able to encourage people and give them hope while I'm doing the body code. And that's why I took the course. Wonderful. And, and glad I did because like a few years back when I went to um, Mexico, I didn't have the course and I wish I had because there were so many things in there. I mean, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants doing what I do. And it's all cancer patients that I was working right. with. And, um, you know, now I feel more equipped, uh, more understanding, um, and able to let people, I think, just to let, help them be empowered to make their own choices and be okay with that. 
and and have some advice at the same time you know and say here here's some choices you can you can you know um see if you'd like to do mm -hmm. but still empower them yeah that's that's really important to feel empowered and in control yeah because I, yeah because i think sometimes uh, they feel the opposite when they get that diagnosis it's like somebody else has the power in their hands. Oh my God, my life is in somebody else's hands. Mm -hmm. And um, if somehow I can empower them to have that back, that's what I want to do. That's the Absolutely. most important thing. That's a wonderful thing. So, and, and just to be positive, okay? This is not, you know, cancer doesn't have to be a life, a life, a death sentence. Right. You know, it can, it can bring, you know, a whole change in your life and empower you and make, make your life even better than it ever was. Yes. And many so people it can be that. just like a roadblock and go, okay, you're at the roadblock, but let's, let's go through a different way now. Okay. We have to take a detour. Right. Well, it, so, so I just want to be there to help people taking that detour any way I can. So it's always been something for me, like, I don't know, I've been studying about cancer for, for years, actually. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I have an interest there. And not sh I didn't even know why. I didn't even know it was going to be an epidemic like it is today, okay, that so many people were going to get cancer. I just, um, uh, I guess I've seen a few people um, go through that, and it was like, oh, gosh, there's got to be something. Yeah. You know, to help. Yes, I know. So, anyways, if I can help, that's what I want to do. And Thank you. I, we we're so excited that you are in our coaching family, and with us. Um, you know, I think the service is very important, and I think emotional release and and um, giving that a try is is something everybody should do that has a cancer diagnosis. So I, I encourage everybody to, um, yeah. to to look into this and, and give it a try. Um, so Bev does this remotely, so you can live anywhere. Yes. Matter. Um, emotionalhealingservices.com is her website. And you can go on and read a little more about it and um, schedule a session with her. And I, I really enjoyed it. I would like to do it again. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Well, I'd love to work on you again or work with you again. Yeah, it's always fun. It's luxury. And like you said, when you're at this roadblock, you can pick a better way now and actually, you know, give yourself the luxury of going even in a better direction than you ever would have if you hadn't gotten a diagnosis. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's letting you say, okay, there's disease here. Let me focus on myself now and be authentic to myself and give myself what I need, body, mind, and spirit. Yes. Right? Yes, exa exactly. I think, you know, like just having po something positive going on in your life, like, and, and planning on having some fun, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think that's really important. And people miss that and they go, Oh my God, I've got this diagnosis. Okay, everything's like, oh God, the world looks horrible. But you know, you can change that. Get, get some good support, okay? And, uh, and make your world like- Joyful. Uh, yes, every day. It can be joyful. There can be something you can be happy about. Joyful, get in nature, laugh. Yeah. You and start forgiving. Be authentic to yourself, whether that. And start forgiving yourself. Right. And others. <laughs> and and others. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's that's a big key right there. Okay. And before I do a session, I pray, and because um, I believe that this is uh, not my work. Okay. Right. right. And at the end of the session. I like to send some good positive energy, okay, um, to the person because I want them to be hopeful. I want them to be excited about their life. Even if, even if their consciousness or the conscious brain says, no, life looks horrible right now, 
the subconscious will accept that, you know, it will accept, yes, this is a good life. I've got a good future. I am, you know, going to be healthy. I'm healing. The subconscious will accept all that. So that's why it's kind of nice to be able to work with the subconscious rather than the conscious brain, <laughs> you know, because uh, get past the negativity. <laughs> and right. Let's go to the part. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We really enjoyed learning about your services and um, such important work. And uh, again, uh, Bev can be found at Emotional healingservices.com well thank you Debbie for having me on today it was an honor it's an honor to have uh, gotten certified um, through this course and I'm excited every time I get to use some of the knowledge that I've learned absolutely you're so, so welcome we're happy to have you thank you have a great one you too Thanks.